So tonight's session is called Inspiring Democracy in Dudley. Thank you very much for coming along. And what we wanted to think about tonight were some changes that Dudley Council are proposing to the area committees that meet every, uh, every few months in five different areas across Dudley Borough. And think about actually how can our voluntary community and faith groups in Dudley Borough work with local councillors um, to actually put in place new ways of, of communities coming together with local councillors um, in fora that will replace area committees. And what we'll have a chance to think through tonight is what it is that the council is proposing and um, kind of what our thoughts are on that and how, how we can work with councillors to help make something really good happen in Dudley. Right, thank you very much. Um, so the starting point was, did we all know who was our local councillor? So that the initial picture is to say, there's a bit of a mystery in some cases as to who that person is, where they can be accessed, um, what their interests are, um, a feeling that maybe professionally people actually do come into contact with councillors, but here as a resident, as within your own home, do you actually know and have confidence in that relationship? But contrasting that, actually, uh, our image there, stylishly represented was of a councillor with a help bag and there were lots of examples or examples of really positive contributions that councillors have made. There was a, a move on from that point to say what's the best way to access uh, councillor links and that's my half um, attempt at trying to do a pick and mix good old fashioned Woolies approach. Um, so that if you're a councillor, try and reach different forms of techniques to reach out to people, not just at one centre at one time, but as flexible as you can. Um, there was a, a debate about whether or not uh, local residents, people um, in non-political situations, uh, fully recognise the political context of elected members, um, and there was a, a re real request that the manifesto for our councillors should be around Dudley people and it shouldn't matter about the political uh, basis of a, a councillor, they're there to serve uh, local interests. So, and finally, uh, a very uh, interesting number of examples where local contacts, knowing um, an elected member has really benefited the work of a group and of individuals. Some people felt that they had um, good relationships with their councillors on first name terms um, and that's because of their, maybe like their past and what they're doing at the present in different groups. Um, some people felt that there wasn't enough time to raise issues in meetings uh, to either get answers or put their views across. I think we've approached this not as residents, which we could we could have done, but uh, very much as uh, representatives from different community groups and thinking about how those uh, groups have related to elected members. And in part, we've said almost that those relationships are, for some of us, non-existent. Um, and reflecting on that, that yes, we do have, uh, uh, we do have relationships with with councillors, with elected members, but sometimes we're not kind of conscious that we're relating to them as, as councillors. Okay, the first, one of the first things that was mentioned was there's not enough time to meet enough people, which is where you get the idea that you know, each member needs to sort of multiply themselves several times in order to get around everybody. Um, and then we talked about what you see in the middle, there's various forms of communication here, which to some extent get in the way, they kind of divorce the councillor from that human contact. So we've got all the communication tools in the world now, and a lot of stuff comes through those channels, but at the, the price that's paid, I suppose, is who, you know, people think, who, who is my councillor? I've never seen them. They probably have. The only the ones that do see them are those that perhaps are connect into various community groups where the members are visible, or they might be on the school governing bodies, that kind of thing. So parents tend to have a, a good relationship with them. Um, but when you take all that away, it's very much they're on call all the time, and with I suppose there's a facelessness about the, the you know the communication. Somebody's ringing them up, and often ringing the other two ward members up, possibly the MP at the same time, and uh, you get this kind of whirlwind of 
communication, whereas, you know, it, we could simplify that in many ways and just bring the sort of human contact back in. And a feeling that decisions, local people might become frustrated with decisions taken through a formal decision making structure such as the cabinet, which they might not be familiar with. Um, and really, uh, the examples quoted where it felt good was those where there was more collective involvement of local people with councillors, joint decision making, joint participation and empowerment. What we would like to see is um, less formal processes and barriers which in effect would have um, different communication needs, so a variety of mechanisms to engage with. And secondly, it's about having an earlier dialogue, so resolving issues from the start rather than getting to a point where no one's got any influence and it's too late and there's no honesty involved. It's not simply just between council and individual resident, but actually the community groups as having a, a, a very significant role and, and how that's configured. The biggest thing that they want is for everybody to be able to talk to each other and they use this kind of, uh, I love the, the metaphor here about the mushrooms, sometimes we keep the people like the public like mushrooms in the dark and it was this recognition that we need to talk to each other to get those mushrooms out of the dark and that links into this is actually we need to all better understand how everything works because and it's kind of this link over here that actually sometimes the councillors don't understand how it all works either and perhaps we need to go on this journey together to look at how it works because and the analogy that was used here was the trees that there are lots of different and it was a really useful one you know somebody comes to them about a tree and there are lots of different trees in the borough and actually some of those trees aren't owned by the council they're owned by other people and it's all working together to understand that because the councillors have to dig all that up as well to dig, we're back on that tree digging <laughs> so it's actually understanding that together and i think it was the recognition that we've got to talk to each other and open up some of those um some some of the light let the light in I'm Councillor Dave Tyler and I've been given the job of revamping the area committee structure. We didn't see this. I didn't personally didn't see all the work, the inspiring democracy work that had gone on. But after the elections in May, part of the Labour Group's manifesto was we are going to change the way we talk to the public to make sure that the neighbourhood forums which we want to move to are going to be far more in tune with what the communities want and not what the council wants. The thrust of the new meetings is to give the public and all of the community groups or people that represent the community groups the opportunity to, go, to come up with points forward, questions forward and to challenge us as councillors to get work done, to get something done and to make things happen. And what we're hoping to do is to make the, uh, the neighbourhood forums less confrontational uh, more about uh, the community sitting around a table together and not us sitting on the top table and then barking down instructions to the members of the public. Meetings need to be more sort of interactive. Um, the sort of timed with that is sort of um, using different seating styles so there's opportunities for people to have like group discussions rather than just being people at the top kind of talking at people. Help people to feel that they can actually make a difference by attending the forum meetings. I mean, the, the need to be friendly, intimate venues where people feel comfortable and able to speak if they want to. Flexible meetings. Um, and that was, I suppose the flexibility was in terms of time, also in the way they're structured, and I think it was, you know, not this, what's been said quite a, a few times today, not having meetings that are st structured like the typical council meeting, um, and having different ways, and that certainly linked, it was the one point where we thought, oh, we haven't looked at young people, and certainly engaging young people, they need to be flexible, and we talked about social media in there, and using that, and recognising that even an informal meeting they may not feel comfortable in, in coming to. And it related to here as well, clear way of submit, submitting questions to be mindful that some people don't like speaking. So it was about flexible meetings. And then I think the other thing that came at the end was about um, having creative solutions. I think the important thing that's come over tonight is we've probably got through more constructive work in 
tonight's meeting than we probably have in all the area committees we've all been to for the last 10 years. Because we've developed into a group of people that actually care about the neighbourhoods and can care about our communities. But what struck me as an overarching issue here is this is a wonderful once-in-a-lifetime chance to bring some of our communities back together. Because at the moment, a lot of our communities are fragmented. A lot of them have no guidance. A lot of them feel lost in a very uncertain time in their lives. And I think this is a chance for us as community leaders to try and gather them, gather the people in. David will like this. Gather the people in and make a difference because you've shown you're prepared to make a difference. Just imagine if we've got 30, 40, 50 more people like you who want to make a difference. I think it's a wonderful opportunity. Please let's not waste it. It's, it's, it's there to be had and all we need to do is to make it happen. So thanks.